Oh. I thought we were already live. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm here with uh, Danny Sawyer, Danny Boy. Mm -hmm. But I'm very happy that you're here and you decided to uh, do this podcast with me on uh, short notice. I was wondering if you'd like to give us some of your background, where you, you've been and where um, you've tattooed. Well, I've, I've been into tattooing now for tattooing professionally 20 years now. Mm -hmm. I started to tattoo in Spain with my with both my brothers, my older brother and my younger brother. We used to live in uh, Palma de Mallorca. Oh, wow. And that's where we started professionally. My brother had started in California, worked a little bit in Mexico, and then had a friend in Spain who uh, invited him out there. He stayed. I ran into him. Couple problems stateside, so I had to had to leave pretty quick, and then uh, yeah, ended up in Spain. Tattooed there with my brothers a couple years, but yeah, I mean my older brother we always had a difficult relationship. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't the best uh, apprentice. It's even can't even really say I was much of an apprentice. I was probably the worst. <laughs> but uh, yeah, being a, a very protective and 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 good brother. He he sent me to a, a friend of his in Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. uh, Harry Seda, who's now in Hawaii. Okay. Harry gave me a very quick uh, crash course four months, and then uh, shortly after that went back to Spain, and then came to Amsterdam for the first time. Mm -hmm. And Amsterdam's kind of been my my home base ever since. Yeah. So kind of like a launch pad or yeah. in a way like yeah, yeah, yeah. can come back here whenever you want. and Yeah, I'd work here, go to the States for six months, come back, stay for a couple of years. Eventually, um, I moved down to Eindhoven, worked for Greg for a little while, mm -hmm. left again, back and forth between the States, ended up in Sacramento for a couple of years. That was a real, I think just like a real eye-opening experience for me and 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 i think that's really when my work started to grow started mm -hmm. to mature a bit um and from there we were moving to milan and made a what was supposed to be a a, a short three-month stay in amsterdam i ended up meeting hank and working for him and then we stayed for almost a year i think about 10 11 months it was only supposed to be a small it was supposed stay. to be a few months all our uh Furniture and everything was in the storage in Milan, and my friend kept calling me like, "Hey, when are you? When are you coming here?" You know, it's like, "I need another month. I need another month." You know, I mean, Hank was my idol. Mm -hmm. You know, is now it's a very different relationship. It's much more family relationship, you can say. But sure. back then, it was like, "Yeah, I get to work with my hero." Right. Yeah. So, um, I, 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 I didn't want to leave. Eventually, we did end up going to Milan. But uh, I don't think I got to enjoy Italy as much as I would have, as much as I do now. Um, was that right before you had moved here, when you were in Milan? Wait, right, where? previously to this time that we moved back, mm -hmm. I'd spent um, three years, three and a half years in Milan. Okay. Out of those three and a half years, we were flying to Amsterdam every two months. Mm-hmm. And then we we're spending the summers here. So it really was like dividing the year about four months in Amsterdam, eight months in Milan. My wife always said, like, I never gave Milan a chance. And yeah, <laughs> she, I think she's right. I did, always wanted to be here. Does she miss it, you think? Or, um, well, yeah, she's, she's Italian, but she's born and raised here. So for her, it was, it was an experience of wanting to live in, in mm -hmm. her native country. But then again, this is her city. So, right. When uh, when Hank was making the museum, he asked us to to move here with him, and uh, yeah, I mean, you couldn't I, say I no. couldn't say no to that. <laughs> of course not. That that was my dream. So, mm -hmm. and uh, how long had you known Hank uh, all throughout your tattooing? Uh, we met in '08. That was when I came out. So yeah, I'd spent those four years between Italy and here, and then uh, yeah, he needed a crew for the museum, so. Nice. <laughs> he asked me to join him, and then uh, yeah, we got Yushi on board, and then uh, and Chris Danley, mm -hmm. and then Dan Dringenberg came out and stayed also. Yeah, where's Dan now? Do you know? Dan's back in California. He's back there. Yeah, yeah. I knew. I remember back in Covina. I remember when he was making uh, machines uh, out here for a mm -hmm. while. 
Yeah. I have uh, a couple nice liners from that guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's a genius. Yeah. It's, it's super interesting, the, the tattooing culture here. You know, you, you always see a lot, um, especially from Hank in the earlier days and him pushing a lot of like books as well. Yeah. That's actually one of the first ways I kind of picked up on your work is the, when you did the collaboration with Bill Loiker and mm-hmm. uh, Dave Gibson. A lot of great flash in that book. Oh, um, thank you, man. So it was, it was cool to kind of now kind of put the face and the artwork all together and uh, have it all come, you know, to one. <laughs> but is that, that type of work like, uh, traditional stuff more? It's definitely more your focus, but do you find yourself branching out to other things as well? Um, yeah, I always did. Mm-hmm. Um, I always loved all, all styles in tattooing. Mm-hmm. Um, when I started tattooing, I thought I wanted to do fine line, black and gray. I always loved cholo stuff mm. from when I was a kid, from growing up in, in Southern California. A guy who was a huge influence on, on me and my brothers is a tattoo artist of Toronto. His name is Chino. When he moved to Spain with us, you know, one of the first things he told me is like, well, you need to have a traditional base mm-hmm. before you do anything else. You need to learn roses, eagles. Hard swallows, panthers, daggers, you know, if you can't do that, don't fuck with anything else, you know, and here I am 20 years later still trying to figure out those five basic fucking yeah. things, you know, mm-hmm. I, I still feel I don't have it down. I get bored with it. Mm-hmm. I do get bored with it a lot sometimes, but uh I tried the last few years branch out instead of just looking at the same old books that everyone else looks at, trying to look for the sources. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's always the best. Yeah, I love antique markets and and digging, digging through stuff. Um, especially back then in the early 2000s, you didn't have all the books. No. It wasn't available, you know. So I remember, you know, if there would be an article in Skin and Ink or ITA of, I don't know, Burt Grimm or whatever, Coleman, you know, trying, mm-hmm. to, trying to look at the sheets behind them, you know, trying to fucking... Yeah, those books weren't available. No. Now you get everything. Yeah. You get everything and... But I've always had a love for all different styles of tattooing, um, for just world culture, folklore. Mm-hmm. So I've always been drawn to Polynesian stuff, Japanese stuff, Tibetan art, Thai art, pre-Columbian art. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't seem to focus so much on it, but I love doing it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, it's funny. A lot of the stuff that I look at myself, mm-hmm. I, I don't know if you could directly translate it to a tattoo but a lot of it inspires me and i can kind of maybe take in some aspect of it yeah. and and but like you were saying before about having that kind of traditional base like, mm-hmm. like you got to do something that you know is going to last and stay stay there with the person for the right. rest of their life so figuring out translating those new things mm-hmm. into the same presentation is always kind of a, a tricky thing. But if every so often you can get lucky and find one, it's nice. I find mo- most most folk art does translate great to tattooing. It's just whether it's sellable, whether mm-hmm. it's marketable, you know, to people in Europe or in the States, you mm-hmm. know. But I love I love looking at yeah. different ethnographic stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but talk, I want to talk about your family some more, like mm-hmm. uh, with your brothers, if um, that was possible. Mm-hmm. Like, how many years ahead of you were they when when you started tattooing? So my older brother is four years older than me. Mm-hmm. My l- little brother is one year younger. My older brother and I both started getting tattooed in the early 90s. Mm-hmm. Um, him being four years older than me, got tattooed first, and maybe about a year later, I was about 13, going on 14, when he started taking me to the tattoo shop, and um, my little brother wasn't into it back then. He was just skate skating, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, my younger brother and I both moved back to the States. He ended up moving back to Spain a year before I did, so he started tattooing a year before me. Mm-hmm. Now, are they still in Spain, or where are they No, now? my older brother... Ended up moving to California, back to California in early 2000s. Mm-hmm. He spent a couple of years at Por Vida in Upland before 
going to Tattoo Land. He worked for Jack for Mm -hmm. a few years, and then he opened up his own place in Huntington Beach called Players Club. Wow. My younger brother also ended up going back to California. He was up north in Chico at a shop called Sacred Art. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, got to work with a great crew there. Schmo Dog passed away a few years ago. Sleepy, Permanent Mark, Tim Pock worked there. It was owned by Dave Singletary. That was a great shop. So I used to go up there regularly as a guest. And then I was in San Diego. Chris moved down to San Diego, and then he's been in Hawaii for, fuck, I think 11 years now, wow. maybe 12. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever get out to visit them at all? Uh yeah, so I'm actually going back to California, I think in three months. Um, I went twice last year, once the year before, but before that, it had been four or five years. I just kind of like, I'm not a big fan of, of the States, mm-hmm. but um, this last few trips, I've really enjoyed myself. I had a blast. So many tattooers come, come to Europe, come to Amsterdam, so I get to meet them. So to be back in California and, and visit their shops is great. And mm-hmm. being around my family also, a lot of my family s- starts to get older. So seeing them and just being back in the neighborhoods is mm-hmm. great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I try to get back as much as I can. Typically go back maybe every three to four months or so. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, I still have like a clientele back yeah. there as well. So I'd like to. Keep it going. Keep it going mm-hmm. and, you know, definitely see the, the family and, uh, my folks. Um, but yeah, it's, it's important. Yeah. Luckily I'm able to do that, mm-hmm. uh, and, and have that. But I, I, yeah, as far as like traveling around, um, is there any other places that you frequent around Europe? Well, you know, like I was mentioning to you before, like when I lived in, in, in Milan in Italy, I kind of felt like I didn't give it a, Mm-hmm. A fair, a fair chance because I wanted to be in Amsterdam, but um, I always worked great there. That it's kind of become my my go to place, and and it's very similar to to Mexico, also to Latin culture. So mm-hmm. it, it feels great, and uh, I go from north to south, up and down. Yeah. What are your favorite favorite spots out there so far? I'd have to say Napoli is probably my favorite city, man. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah, the first time I went, I really did not like it. <laughs> um, it was just, it, it was culture shock. And I just had to set my mind straight to it because I was like, wait a minute, I'm in fucking Europe and this is like being in old San Juan uh-huh. again, you know. Once I accept that and I'm like, okay, cool. This is like Tijuana. This is like San Juan. This is, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Embrace it. It's a fucking jungle. I fell in love with it. I l- absolutely love that city. You know, I yeah. love going to restaurants at one or two in the morning and, and drinking till four mm-hmm. or till I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I love feasting and, and, and the hospitality and the love that I feel Naples is, is hard to, to, to beat. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, I, I love it all. Rome, Rome is amazing, and and all my friends there, and the shops are great. Milan, also. Tuscany, I spend a lot of time in Tuscany and Bologna, also. So mm-hmm. everywhere's different. Yeah, I I, I like the laid backness of it. Well, yeah. I I lived there for five years, and where, where were you at? We were in um, Florence, but I remember when I first got there, it was tough to slow down. I didn't know how to do it. Yeah. I was getting really frustrated with people because they wouldn't keep up with me. And like, mm-hmm. uh, as far as like, I need to get something done at a certain time. And mm-hmm. slowly I started to realize like, nobody gives a shit. <laughs> like they're just, they're just, they're going to do what they're going to do when they're going to do it. And yeah. there's nothing you can do to change it. And, and uh, I know you, <laughs> I heard that the podcast you did with, with Francesco and just uh-huh. mentioning something as stupid as going to the post office, you know, would yeah, drive yeah. me crazy. I want to punch everyone in there. <laughs> and, uh, now I realize like, how often do I go to the post office? You know, who gives a shit? Maybe I'll just take my time. And eventually I see myself moving back somewhere in the Mediterranean, but you know, mm-hmm. most likely Italy. Yeah. My new favorite place is Greece, so I love it. That's where I want to go. Yeah, Greece is amazing. Have you tattooed there? Yeah. Yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I just got back yesterday. Oh, you did? Yeah. <laughs> Athens is amazing. Wow. There's certain cities that have really 
uh, had an impact on me because I'm, I'm a big history buff. Okay. Mexico City was one of them. I went there the first time as a kid, and I was just completely blown away. The pyramids and the culture was so old and ancient, and then going to Rome, yeah. you know, same thing. But then from Rome, you go to Athens, and you're like, fuck, man, this is... This is older than that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And it's just so decadent but beautiful at the same time. And, yeah. And the people are... Exactly the same as the rest of, of the Mediterranean, but of course their language is completely different, you mm -hmm. know, so you can't understand fuck all of what they're saying. No. Most of them speak good English, but, you know, between Spanish, Italian, uh, you know, I can definitely see the similarities. But yeah, when you go to Greece, you're like, holy shit, this is where, where it all comes from. Right. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Um, that's one place I, I definitely want to go to, but I feel like you can't not be inspired by being there as well because the, you got, art just sticking out of the ground Everywhere. from you know Everywhere. thousands of years ago mm -hmm. and that to me is super inspiring and even here like we were walking around Amsterdam mm -hmm. and you know it's it's not as littered with art as Italy but there's a lot of great architecture mm -hmm. there's a lot of great statues uh, and gargoyles mm -hmm. beautiful beautiful things all around and I just take that in. Like I, yeah. I was just walking around with a smile all day, taking all that stuff in. That's something you don't necessarily get from the States. Um, no, no. You, I mean, I, I'm from Boston, so okay. they did have like a, a little renaissance there mm -hmm. where they have like neo-Romanesque or like Palladian style, like architecture, mm -hmm. but not a lot. Right. And, you know, John Singer Sargent was there. And doing a lot of paintings and during that time and there was a whole like painting movement like the mm. the Boston school and most of that all just came from France like a, a right. lot of people from France came and it all kind of spread out but it never caught like it never like right. nothing like you would have here in Europe people still had to hunt people still had to farm uh -huh. you know and uh, in, in New England back back in that time like, mm -hmm. they probably didn't have the the leisure yeah, but I'm and sure. the wealth that, you know, Florence and and France and all these other places had. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wish I had a time machine. I always think of like yeah. that, like, I wish I could just not even participate, but just be a fly on the being wall. Yeah, be an uh, observer there. Trying to figure out some new way to grind some oil paint or some shit mm -hmm. like that. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm, I love that stuff. I always go back to that that type of artwork whenever I'm kind of like stumped with mm -hmm. my own stuff is go back to kind of, you know, the ancient uh, or the older stuff mm -hmm. and then kind of look at it through a newer, fresher eye. But I, yeah, I love the history and I never went out openly to like look and, and like study history, but mm -hmm. because I was studying a lot of like painting and, and artwork you can't not know what's going on in, in the world during that time right. or what made people produce these paintings. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's super cool. You were talking about Francesco earlier and, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he's, he's a great guy. And, and we were talking about, you know, young guys like that, that you just want to strangle because they're so good and yeah. they, they get it so quickly. Yeah. Yeah. The, and the, there's a few guys, you know, he's, I've, I've been watching him for years and it's just like, I'd almost want to say something like, oh, you know, you should look at this, you should look at that a bit. But I, I feel a lot of times I'm, I could be a little bit too much with that. Mm -hmm. And okay, I'll keep my mouth shut. And all of a sudden I see him like six months, a year later, like just blowing up, like, holy shit, okay, I'll figure this shit out on uh -huh. own, you know? So but there's a lot of talent there, a lot of great artists. It's the youngest country of what I would still consider traditional Western tattooing. Mm. Greece didn't have a, a, a culture for it. Spain did not. Spain comes in in the early 80s through the biker mm -hmm. biker world. Mao and, and these guys tattooing a lot of GIs down in Rhoda and stuff. But Italy still had what I would consider Western old school nautical tattooing. But it was the youngest one, you know, that was Gemma Franchoni, Marco Pisa, mm -hmm. G.P. Rondinella, those guys in the 70s. So it always had that. And, and I've always been drawn to that, that style. Mm. Yeah, definitely. But I've, I've seen a lot of, 
Maybe I, I was talking with Francisco about this before, but maybe I wasn't aware of it, or maybe because of the internet now, where mm -hmm. you can kind of see everything posted. I, I I wasn't aware of like how many great tattooers there were producing this like traditional based mm -hmm. artwork, and it just blows me away. And um, and I I, I I see it developing into its own style as yeah. well, and that's a kind of a fascinating thing to see as well yeah i definitely uh see myself going and hanging out with francesco more and visiting having that laid-back lifestyle and <laughs> it's nice. very appealing to me <laughs> any any funny stories with H hank or oh jesus <laughs> <laughs> i don't know it's just kind of hard to to just like i said he he, he was a hero to me so he was a uh huge huge influence i learned so much from working with him mm -hmm. um got to travel quite a bit with him japan mexico california italy on several occasions um what was it like in uh japan oh <laughs> it was awesome you know i'm as it's it's funny because even if i go to the complete opposite side of the world, mm -hmm. I'm doing exactly the same thing. We're doing this. Yeah. You know, we're sitting in tattoo shops, Bullshit. talking tattoos, <laughs> drinking. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe I'd kind of, I've been thinking about the last few years, especially now that my son's getting older, I, I do want to change that a bit and see the places I actually go to. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been at, I, I, I always say, I, I haven't been to Ireland. I've flown there three times, but I know two blocks of <laughs> Temple Bar around Tommy's shop. That's it. Um, Greece is my new favorite country. I know Monasteraki, Tassos' shop. That's it. <laughs> so Japan was the same thing. Japan was, um, uh, we we're lucky enough that, uh, Mr. Horitoshi let us stay at, at, at their guest apartment. We worked with Akira, did a convention, went to Yokohama for, Five hours, maybe. Mm. Have dinner with Horiyoshi. Then took another day trip to go meet with um, Mr. Oguri, uh, Horihide. Mm -hmm. Had dinner, spent the night. Eventually, my wife was like, well, can we do at least a little bit of sightseeing? And I was like, fuck, all right. <laughs> Half a day. And uh, what is it, that Monday malarkey? Uh, yeah. My wife just showed it to me. And <laughs> there's really exactly did. that that picture of the guy with the girlfriend saying like okay well but yeah i'm, I'm sorry that's mm -hmm. that's how i've spent my life and you yeah. know my yeah, wife my wife doesn't like it but yeah i had a a, a machine on my wedding finger before i married her you know, <laughs> been married to tattooing um it's crazy with the all the changes it's it's going through you know it's, mm -hmm. it was my parent first you know it took care of me and provided for me it's God to me, mm -hmm. and now it's just like you know. He's, you know, I feel like you know when you see these parents on uh, these TV shows when their kids come back all hooked on smack <laughs> tweakers, you know, and like you got to take these fucking kids in, you know, uh -huh. and that's what they're doing is now. <laughs> that's how it. Feels. Yeah, that's definitely mm -hmm. how it feels. Mm -hmm. It's been fucking prostituted, shat on, mm -hmm. commercialized, everything, beaten, but. Yeah. But I think I, we, we talk a lot about this, uh, you know, outside the podcast and like, what, what, what can we do to change it or make it better or like make it our own? Uh, you know what? I don't remember who said this. Maybe it was Bob Shaw, I think. Mm -hmm. He said, tattooing is a reflection of the time that we live in. Mm -hmm. And I think that couldn't, that, that couldn't be more true. I mean, we live in a fucking bullshit fucking society now which you know from our generation i'm sure people in the 70s or 80s would have said the same thing oh you know these guys in mm -hmm. the early 90s or you know yeah. but still it's just it's it's global it's cheap it's fast mm -hmm. and um as impressive as a lot of these tattooers are to me a lot of it just lacks soul mm -hmm. it lacks uh balls mm -hmm. yeah but you know, you look around you, and then uh, most people lack soul and they lack balls. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they get the tattoos that they deserve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess for me, I'm always trying to go back to what I remember it to be and try to always keep that in the back of my mind. Because I can always kind of focus on that, like, 
all the aspects. Like mm. I, I, I could, I could have sleepless nights thinking about all yeah. the, the shit I hate about what's going on. And I think the biggest thing is I, I feel like it's all out of my control and there's nothing I can do. And what I can do is just make sure that I'm doing what's right. And well, that's, that's the right attitude. Um, and, you know, I, I like to think that also. I like to find the positive in the negative. And, um, you know, the, the early tattoo shows, as corny as they were, you know, they did bring positive changes. You know, we went from doing the Leo Zelueta fucking sleeves and biomechanical, which for some reason is coming back. I don't know why. <laughs> well, I know why. Because those fucking kids didn't do those tattoos. So they th they're they being retro. They're trying to be cool. But no, I, I actually did a lot of these lower back fucking tribals. They suck. I'd rather do a Pinterest tattoo <laughs> and be done with it than the, the fucking... Ass antlers, you know? Ass antlers. <laughs> Those are horrible. Horrible to do, especially on the fucking fat ladies. But um, it's true. <laughs> true is true. That's, that's, I'd that's rather how, do a lower that's, back than That's ribs, how they so. say. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but, you know, these shows, all of a sudden, if, if Garber's doing a koi, mm -hmm. then, you know, the knucklehead down the street comes in and wants a koi. Mm -hmm. He wants a tiger. So it, it really did open up and made people want to get cooler tattoos. You know, all of a sudden, everyone wanted a memorial tattoo, or they had to wait till their fucking someone died, dog died to get a tattoo, or you know, whatever. But um, it 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 did show better artwork, definitely. You know, I think what Ami was doing and Tim and all those guys, they're doing good tattoos. So people who were seeing good tattoos, I think by the time they get into these contests, and it all went to shit. Mm -hmm. I was thinking back at some of those earlier shows. The, the 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 one show that I thought for a contest that was actually decent was that Tattoo Wars, where they actually just showed people what they did to kind of prepare and like the work that actually went into it. I remember people talking about those, and I, I never watched them. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you can't compete. How are you gonna put two guys in? in it's I, I I'd rather watch that uh, Tattoo Gloves that uh Tattoo Gloves. Keith Underwood puts on the oh the boxing the boxing yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Suit, two tattooers box and uh, <laughs> try to uh, out tattoo each other you uh -huh. can't I mean you can't compare it. and then who wins and then you know what the one guy's like oh man my tattoo didn't fucking win and he's got to live with it mm -hmm. for the rest of his life you yeah. know and the shows that they that they have now are like oh yeah that nose is fucked up like what the fuck is wrong with people you know like mm -hmm. yeah I think we we watched one the other day and I was losing my mind. Um, but I think it's going to be one of those things like the, those same like companies that put out those programming, they, they, they did the same thing with like souping up the cars and like with doing everything. all that stuff. And then everybody was like a Harley guy and nobody's doing that anymore. Right. So I think I'm hoping that it's going to blow over and the people that are really interested in tattooing are gonna continue to do it well that's the whole thing with with this whole shit that blew up the internet about uh saving or legalizing tattooing in, in japan i was the first one to be like leave it the way it is shut the fuck up you don't go to court and fucking try to open up like i wish that uh they close every shop down mm -hmm. i could work you know in an apartment mm -hmm. and be just fine yeah, you know all the guys that worked in New York back in the day said it was great. Mm -hmm. I, I I never got to got to work like that, but it's not bad. And in Japan, that's the way it kind of was mm -hmm. when uh, at least when I went there. Yeah, it wasn't. Uh, what was it? I think Mario Barth that did that documentary on Hari Toshi, and he's like, oh, "Okay, let's turn the camera off." No, it's there. Everyone mm -hmm. knows it's there, but it's not on the ground. It's not in your face, mm -hmm. and. Um, I think that's a good thing. Yeah. I I came from uh, when tattooing was illegal in Boston, and I had that same kind of thing right. where me and a friend of mine had a underground shop, mm -hmm. and it was it was nice. It was like it wasn't like just a bedroom, you know, yeah. and or a kitchen. It was dedicated to tattooing, and um, we had our beepers and a beeper code. Mm -hmm. And then when we called you, you had to have a reference of mm -hmm. like who. Who who do you know that we have tattooed and it was fun. Um, it was a lot of work. Um, you guys were busy, huh? 
We were, yeah, it was word of mouth. I mean, <laughs> we weren't, we, I'm busier now. Okay. Um, I, I got to say that I'm busier now, but there was some kind of, uh, there was, there was a nice feeling to the chase. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I don't even know what I think about all that stuff. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much in my own little bubble most of the time. Mm. But yeah, the, as far as the shows are, it's like I avoid those shows as, as much as I can because it doesn't reflect what I see as right. as, as what I, I want it to be. But it's, if it's, I focus on the clients and, and mm-hmm. then focus on like showing them the same love I have for it, mm-hmm. I, it, it rubs off on them, uh, yeah. even if they didn't have that curiosity before. I noticed with some people. Yeah, it's it's just it's it's hard to. Educate people, I guess. I don't know. Mm. And it takes time. Yeah. And it takes a certain personality, but yeah, you know, I, mm-hmm. I've thought about, okay, do I need to do walk-in days? Well, you know what? It's a tattoo shop. Bro. Just walk in <laughs> any day of the fucking week. Come in. What do you want? You get those calls, uh, for people. Do you, are you doing walk-ins? <laughs> Look, man, I spent, I don't know how many years collecting and painting everything here is hand painted so just just pick something Mm -hmm. it's all good you're gonna get a great tattoo right don't think about it too much (laughs) i just had another question i just fucking lost it but i like where it's going um we had a lot of folks on the podcast being very like uh I don't know. It's, I guess skating the the issue of like uh, I guess the negative aspects of like where tattooing have, has been going. So it's I think it's refreshing to hear somebody talk about it as well. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, someone complain. No, yeah, someone please complain. No, I, um, I, I'm not a complainer. Mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm not gonna fucking be that guy. Mm-hmm. Like I said, true is true, and uh, but hopefully, like. Uh, not not to say that this podcast could possibly be leading towards the end of of tattooing or like to, towards the you know the the negative thing but mm. i guess for me i'm i would like to use the, this new media mm-hmm. to kind of talk about those things that i'm right. interested in and uh and hopefully not be part of a problem as well but i think the people that have listened to it are people are kind of interested in the same things that right. you and I are interested in. And so, um, there's like a, a, a good kind of reunion there. And so we're uh, preaching to the choir, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, you know, you never know what would happen, but I love, I love, like, I didn't even know that uh, all the, the flash here is hand painted, mm-hmm. um, at Regen, one of the shops I worked at in, in Boston, mm-hmm. we were doing that. Because winters are slow, and mm-hmm. we just sat down and did a page. Sometimes did some uh, pages together, and that's something that, that if people don't know, like that's more original than the 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 flash Absolutely. or or like what you're gonna find on the, on the internet. The, ima- you can, the image that they bring that you know they think they're getting something original that mm-hmm. you know a million other fucking idiots got the same tattoo, but you know. And and that's not even talking about the, the, the Pinterest. That's talking about whatever the trend is mm-hmm. in traditional or Japanese or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, everything is the same. And it just bores the shit out of me. Mm-hmm. From when I started, like I said, I wanted to do every style. You know, I, I, I thought that that's what a good tattooer should be. You should be able to tackle everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but I did kind of get stuck on traditional because I hadn't fucking mastered it. Mm-hmm. You know, and... We'll see if I master it in the next 20 years. We'll see. Right. That's why I paint everything. I paint it, put it on the wall. And a year later, two years later, I'm like, ah, that, that leg on that pinup's off. I'm going to fucking redo the whole sheet. Mm-hmm. You know, or I'm going to make it better. Make it better. And most people I see, they just, it's like they're a cover band. It's just doing the same replica bullshit. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm taking an Owen Jensen or a Burt Grimm and doing ugly images with perfect technique I'm like why mm-hmm. you know if you do a little bit of research for example the pike is a perfect example of that because you'll see this fucked off Bert Grimm design and then you'll see 
Bob Shaw or Colonel Todd made that design a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And then comes Phil Sims and just fucking makes that same skull snake eagle even better. Mm -hmm. And then Bob Roberts would do the same. Dave Gibson. So why would I try to make that same image better than the last guy did? You know, or at least add my own two cents to it Mm -hmm. instead of just saying, okay, it's going to look like the fucking 40s, three colors and, uh, you know, these fat pinups with droopy eyes and shit like no <laughs> make them sexy make mm-hmm. them hot yeah but that's uh that's a good thing with um as far as adding to the lineage mm-hmm. of tattooing and that's you see that with any sort of ancient art as mm-hmm. well absolutely with art with music mm-hmm. you know absolutely yeah bill always says you know we're playing the blues here that's what we do <laughs> I just want to share a story with you. I was getting kind of, I guess, stale in, in, mm-hmm. in tattooing, and, and I actually took some years off. Um, I was still doing it from time to time. Mm-hmm. And I felt when I came back to it, that love was a lot stronger because I kind of, you know, like it was like the girl that got away or something mm-hmm. like that, where it was just like, oh, shit, no, I, I can't live without this thing. Yeah. Um, I was still doing stuff in art, but... Yeah, it's it's funny. Like since I've come back to it, it's been it's been a a whole new new ride. Mm-hmm. I really like what you had to say, and as far as like uh, the opinions and and sentiments, like I think it's something that we're all kind of feeling as well. Of mm-hmm. like that frustration of where tattooing's going, and especially when everything is new and and different all the time. Where do I fit in? You know, yeah. and that's that's a that's a weird place. But I always just go back to my <laughs> my main my main idea is like what what do I like? And and yeah. I'm just gonna power through and make it make it as best as I can. I think that that that's what kind of keeps me on the road still with all these years is the the, the fresh uh, the fresh uh, people and and tattooing other tattooers. You know. Mm. Being able to do that as opposed to just staying still and, and like I said, it's, it's, um, as I get older and, and, and as I become a, you know, my, my son is getting older and as a parent, I just kind of like, see, like, fuck man, where is the world heading? Not just tattooing, mm-hmm. where is the world heading? <laughs> what is wrong with people? <laughs> yeah. It's so. Crazy. We should end with that. What the fuck's going on? What is wrong with what is wrong <laughs> what with is people? wrong with everybody? <laughs> no, but I don't mean to be negative. I really don't. You know, when I started a year or two after you, I remember going to conventions and wanting to meet people to learn, mm-hmm. getting tattooed by them. Fuck if I only had enough money to get tattooed by one particular guy. Okay, well I had whatever bullshit flash I made or whatever bullshit line drawing book I had made and going and giving it to mm-hmm. people. Yeah, I just yeah. wanted to give it to them. And eventually, you know, a lot of those guys became friends. Mm-hmm. You know, I got to know them that way. Now I'm at a conv- and And of course, taking my portfolio and saying, hey, can you break this down for me? Mm-hmm. Fuck. Cool. Thank you. Mm-hmm. You know, you need to hear that. You yeah. need to hear good criticism, whether... Mm-hmm. It, it inflates your ego or whether it completely deflates it, you mm-hmm. know, like you shouldn't have an ego in this. You're not going to learn that way. And uh, nowadays it's, yeah, no one's coming to ask for anything no. other than if you want to buy whatever bullshit they're trying to sell you, <laughs> but they don't even have a fucking booth. So it's like, really, Dick, why would I want to buy your flash? I'm selling flash here. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> I, I don't get it. <laughs> I wouldn't even want it for free if they were giving it to me half the time, but it's still, it's the principle. Uh It is a thing about principle. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Things have fucking changed, man. Mm -hmm. We'll see. My my, my son's 12. Mm -hmm. He says he wants to get in this. We'll see. We'll see what the world holds for him. At the end of the day, that's all I care about now. Has, Has he expressed interest in tattooing? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He draws, he paints a lot. He's 12, you said? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. He's going to be a monster if he... Well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Um, you know, he asked me... Remember he asked me... The first time 
it was in kindergarten. He was five. And then he told me, he said, Pop, I want to be a tattoo artist. I said, I don't think you should. Mm-hmm. And he said, why? I go, because you're going to have to work twice as hard as everyone else. <laughs> he said, well, why? I go, because you're my son. And that's <laughs> what I expect from you. And otherwise, go do anything else. Mm-hmm. Anything else. But if you're going to get in this business, you have to represent. Mm-hmm. And if you ain't going to do that, if you ain't going to fucking work hard and put everything in I mean, put your fucking life mm-hmm. into this, then don't. Yeah, don't bother. Don't bother. But he's still asking you. He's still asking. He's mm-hmm. still asking, and and yeah, he's painting. Um, I've been taking him on the road. Just me and him now. It's fun. We did a Paris convention last year. We did Tijuana also. That was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, we've always traveled together with uh with my wife as well but also doing the father-son trips are great Mm -hmm. that's awesome taking them back to california and to mexico was amazing Mm -hmm. do you see yourself going back to uh paris this year oh yeah yeah Yeah. we'll be there then we'll see you there yeah Yeah, that's that's really become my favorite one london's always been great Mm -hmm. i've been doing that one since the first one but paris as a Something different. It's a good atmosphere. Uh, yeah, there. it's a great atmosphere. Great food. Yeah, I love the restaurants. There. I love the parties. So <laughs> I can't wait. Awesome. Anywhere else that you're traveling in the future that we can plug for you? Um. Well, I, I plan to be going now that my son's older. We plan to be taking him to Mexico more. Mm-hmm. I really, really enjoyed New York. This last year and Philadelphia. So I really want to explore the East Coast. And then this last year I was in Minnesota also with my buddy Josh Harman, mm-hmm. Aloha Monkey. So yeah, definitely be going back that way. Been meaning to get back down to Texas. My friend Mike Tweed, I haven't been down there in fuck, 15 years maybe at his shop. I'm kind of spoiled being here in Amsterdam. It sucks, you know, because <laughs> all my friends love coming to Amsterdam yeah, yeah. so it's like every month or every two months someone's passing through and you know it's always right before London or right before Paris that we get everyone comes so it's like for me to get out and go visit them it takes a few years before I can do my rounds but mm-hmm. um, yeah I really really enjoyed my time in Texas that was fun so I'd like to go back there we be going back to Sacramento I think this year again San Francisco. It sucks that Bill Salmon just passed away. I won't be able to visit yeah. with him anymore. Mm-hmm. He was a great friend of ours. And um, where else? Yeah. That's, that's I'd enough. like to check out Asia <laughs> some more. Mm-hmm. But uh, for the rest, just, you know, I, I, I kind of have my rounds. Luxembourg, Italy, Greece. I was working in Denmark also usually once a year. Mm-hmm. I didn't go last year, but yeah, I need to get back up to Copenhagen, back to Dublin. I love it there. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Where can we find you on Instagram and uh, website? Uh, Instagram, we have two. I have uh, my personal one is Danny Boy Tattooing, Mm -hmm. and then we have the shop one, Sawyer Family Tattooing. Then the website is also that, Sawyer Family Tattooing. I don't know. I don't know how that shit works, man. Just come... Call, just come, come to the shop. Call, call the shop. <laughs> Don't okay. even call. Just come when they're yeah, open. Yeah, just walk in. We're open six days a week. Mm-hmm. Or pick up a phone and call. Don't direct message or fucking WhatsApp or any other shit. Just, just get here. Just get here. Write a letter. <laughs> yes. That's what I should have done. But yeah. I, I wouldn't, it wouldn't have gotten here when I was here. <laughs> I just show up with the so, equipment. Yeah, just show up. Hey, man, we're, uh, we're doing this thing. Yeah. Want, want to join? But, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, you know, I re- respect what you do and, um, you know, the passion you have and, uh, definitely don't lose it and don't, don't stop doing what you're doing because it's, well, thank it's you, man. Nice. We won't, you know, like I said, I, I don't want to sound too bitter or, mm-hmm. or, or, you know, focus on the negative, but, uh, yeah, it's, I think, um, it goes through waves, mm-hmm. you know, and, totally. and of course it's all economics and, you know, whether it's slow months or busy months, you know, sometimes are better than others, but in general, yeah. Okay. The changes that we've seen 
I've been tremendous. And then, but sometimes like, fuck. Four tattooing from the late 90s. You know, someone that started in 2010. Well, imagine, you know, the changes that went between 1999, 95 to 1980s. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Five, eighty-seven, eighty-eight. You know, there was a whole Huge. different fucking animal. And mm-hmm. then those guys to the guys in the seventies. So, it, it, it's always changing. Mm-hmm. We just got to keep up with it. That's it. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Thank you.